Good morning. Um, I'm really glad to be here and excited to build on uh, actually what Daniel talked about just a few minutes ago. Um, strategic foresight is uh, a practice that can set the stage for really transformative solutions. And it, for me, it comes from years working inside million dollar organizations and feeling like what's shown in this picture, feeling like change was relentless and tremendously challenging. I was standing on the tracks, watching the train coming and couldn't get out of the way. And I also felt oftentimes like the tools I was given to respond to the challenges were similar to pumping this hand car, you know, pumping as hard as you can, working with the people on your team, but often feeling trapped in uh, linear activities that maybe weren't even headed in the direction that you needed to go into the future. And the problems we face as organizations have really changed a great deal. Oftentimes um, in my early years in the corporate world, it seemed like our challenges were primarily technical. How do we? Um, Tools that we've been given in organizations often feel uh, like hard work and not very agile. And we need to learn how to respond to different kinds of challenges. So instead of just getting from point A to point B as efficiently as possible, how do we respond to challenges that seem increasingly complex and even at times chaotic? And we don't have a lot of time to respond. And we're dealing with changes in our operating environment where our current offerings, our current services and practices may be maturing and even beginning to end, trend down that other side of the curve. And what's emerging for us isn't advanced enough to help sustain our organizations and help us achieve our goals. In fact, we're trapped in this messy middle of responding to disruptions without losing our way. So what can help us do that? What can help us equip our teams? Well, it's a new set of practices that we need to invest in. One of my favorite people right now is Rebecca Ryan. She's a futurist in Wisconsin, but she talks about the challenge of trying to plan when we're looking backwards. And I myself have had many experiences of building annual operating and even longer term strategic plans that are built based on where we've been, constrained by what we've known in the past versus anticipating and leaning into what's emerging around us. So strategic foresight is a way to build future ready organizations, which I know all of us want to be but we rarely have as much time as we would like or the organizational development that we would like to help us become that. And here are some characteristics of a future ready organization. Um, you can make adjustments, you're flexible. You are constantly investing in the future, in the next thing, and you take advantage of diverse perspectives. And here's the other thing, when I talk about strategic foresight and futures, I am not talking about crystal balls and making predictions and whether or not you're right. The basis of strategic foresight and futures thinking is that, as Richard Lum says, the future doesn't yet exist. And we in fact are shaping it by the choices we make today. So how would we like to change or impact the unfolding of the future of our organizations and our teams? How can we become aware of the possible futures that might be in front of us? And knowing that change will always be happening. So again, we're not gonna nail it down and make it happen, which oftentimes strategic plans were built on this notion that I'm gonna lay out a course to the future and we're not gonna look left and we're not gonna look right. So why strategic foresight? It is a practice that has been used successfully by many companies across the nation, across the globe. Shell Oil, um, the Omaha Public Power District, 
any number of organizations have employed these practices because it's about identifying possibilities and then becoming an agent of pursuing those possibilities. It's also a more comprehensive way to identify potential threats to your organization or your operating environment. And it helps you unearth those hidden opportunities. Innovation rarely occurs because we slam into something cool and different that we hadn't thought of before. It is because we are practicing curiosity and we have a discovery mindset. And we're mapping the landscape. So we're always alert to the way that we're traveling, what's around us. And the other thing that I think is really powerful is this practice can help you to equip the people in your organization to create more transformative solutions, to practice that entrepreneurial, and that's with an I, you know, in existing organizations mindset and equip your teams for distributed leadership. As our organizations get flatter and more dispersed, we need to be interoperable and have a shared sense of where we're headed. So in Rebecca Ryan's world, um, as a futurist, she's identified four key steps to the process of strategic foresight. And they're really very practical, even though they may sound a little new age. They're not. They're very pragmatic. What's happening in here versus out there is your first stop in the sensing phase. Oops. And here, think of your organization as embedded in um, environments. And the larger outer circle is your working environment, the larger ecosystem. And so you're going to pay attention to the trends that come from the social sphere, technological changes, what's happening in our economy, certainly environmental topics are key, and politics ever in front of us. And then you move into the next ring, and you're going to pay attention to those relationships and networks that inform your organization or the issue that you're focused on. So again, very pragmatic and step-by-step. -step. All of you, I'm sure, have a sense of issues or forces that are emerging around you that are of concern, either because they seem full of possibility or because they seem somewhat threatening. So the sensing phase helps you organize those things and put them in a form that you can use to gather insights. And then you move into imagining what could happen. So you've gathered some signals and trends. Now, how do we begin to organize those into storylines? How do we begin to name the most critical uncertainties? Not every single and signal or trend matters to your organization. Which ones do? Here's some examples of uncertainties that might impact an organization such as the one you are part of. Um, other things that are showing up that we need to pay attention to is you know, post-COVID futures, social cohesion. Um, what happens if we have fractured community identities and how do our organizations operate within that? And then you create your axes of uncertainty. So we intersect the most critical axes and we begin to play out the stories of what would we see if these things happened? What is the nature of the impact that would happen to our organization? And that's how we shift into the third phase, which is defining what do we want to happen and how will we get there? So this is where it begins to sound a lot like strategic planning because we're beginning to determine our aspirational future, but we're using it with all of the insights we've gathered in the first two phases looking at probability and impact. And what do we need to do to influence those possible outcomes? And then we can also take pre-existing strategies or operational plans, and we can ask ourselves, what parts of those plans address those different potential scenarios? And what are some low-risk, 
actions we can take right now. And low risk is defined by strategies and priorities that address any number of probabilities and impacts. And what are some of our higher risks? You know, so BHAG sort of strategies that um, aren't certain, but have the potential for great payoff or could be negative impact as well. Phase four is doing. So it's fine to gather insights and to tell some stories, but then we got to do something with it. And in our world with fast paced change, we can't often afford anymore for um, our teams to spend a lot of time arduously creating multi-year highly detailed plans. So strategic doing is a methodology in which I'm certified that helps you go from idea to action in short bursts. But it also creates high impact pathfinder projects that have short horizon lines for implementing, testing, evaluating, and refining. So there are four phases and getting to doing and gathering momentum around the things you care about is essential. Why work with someone like me? I bring you 20 years of experience, as mentioned in my bio, from everything from being a buyer for Target stores, a business analyst in the grocery industry, to uh, 15 years in Cedar Rapids in the nonprofit sector, building solutions to local concerns. I can help you frame the right question so the focus of your intention is in the most productive place. I have years of experience in designing personalized and engaging processes so that when you're done, it belongs to you, your organization, your team, and it's something you can replicate into the future. And your team members who engage with the process have a sense of ownership and accountability for what gets created at the end. I can help you gather the rich insights you need. So similar to what Daniel was talking about related to harvesting data, it's data and it's other indicators in your environment that will help you decide where you're headed in the future. Then it's really important for us to spend time aligning your assets and your architecture. So in strategic doing is a big piece of this as well, right? It doesn't make sense to build solutions requiring assets you don't own. So how will you do that? How will you structure your teams and your work environments to maximize the possibilities? We'll make sure you've explored viable alternatives. And you can't squeeze all the risk out of any of this kind of work, but we can certainly spend time doing some clear-eyed evaluation of the risks in front of you and the opportunities as well. And create a roadmap that drives you towards the results that you seek that can be iterative and that can have a life cycle beyond the planning exercise itself. So I thank you for listening and suffering through my technological difficulties at the beginning. Um, but uh, I'm here and ready to assist if the things I've talked about match the needs of your organization.